The Sacramento Kings are a team that a lot of people didn't predict to be a playoff squad going into the year. Yeah. I did. And then I backtracked. Mm. I want to formally apologize to Kings fans. We should have known this was coming this year. We should have known when you build around two star players and you maximize them offensively with a great head coach and Mike Brown, good stuff happens. And for the Kings last night, the. De- demolishing the Portland Trail Blazers, uh, a team that's failed to build around team, of course, Tom out filling around stars by 40 points. The Kings are now, for the first time in 16 years, headed to the playoffs. The last time the Kings were a playoff team, I'm trying to find it on Twitter. So I don't think the iPhone came out yet. 2002, right? 2006. It's been 16 Six? years. Oh, the iPhone came out then. Uh, it, I Check mean, it on Twitter ab- right now. It's absolutely insane what the Kings are doing. Um, yeah, let alone playoff team. I think you're underselling it. They're the second seed or the third seed now. Um, I, I was eight seed. years old the last time the Kings made the playoffs. It, it's it's crazy. I mean, th- and that's why I've commended them and said, you know, bravo <laughs> to them. I, I just, you know, but you, this is your thing. You wanted to apologize to them. So, I mean, I'm not going to apologize. I want to apologize to Kings fans because I've, I've even in the season thrown some shade at their star and Demonte Sabonis. And I still think there are some limitations with Domas, maybe uh, defensively, not a run protector, but for Sacramento offensively to build the best unit in the league, Mike Brown is undisputed coach of the year. De'Aaron Fox, the most clutch player in the NBA, he'll get that award. He'll be the first player to ever win clutch player. He'll get the trophy. And I think Keegan Murray last night, 188 three-point makes, maybe more. He broke the rookie record for three-point makes in a season. That's not going to talk about Kevin Herter's done his career year. I look at Sacramento, and realistically, in this West, they can get hot in a series and without a doubt beat anybody. Anybody. Maybe not Denver. Maybe not Memphis. They're not going to be favored in those series. But when this offense catches fire, it's at a point where it's like a punch drunk boxer that's kind of overpowered. Defensively, they may not be able to protect the rim. They're limited on the perimeter. They don't have a, a true elite point of attack defender. But I think offensively, the construct of their offense, it, strengths, it, stre- it puts you to the stress, stress test in transition because they play with so, so much pace. But they have so much shooting and so much finishing at the rim. So it's the combination of facts pushing the tempo, Malik Monk giving them an injection of scoring, but then so much shooting and an elite level playmaker. If it weren't for Jokic, Demonte Sabonis would be the best passing center since Wilt Chamberlain. That's how good of a playmaker he is. And so I want to give Kings fans their tip of the cap. What Sacramento has done this year is nothing short of remarkable. And give their general manager, Monty McNair, an extension. Vivek Rondia, I mean, the guy's the only GM you've really found that can build a team like this. Yeah, it, it, it's so fun seeing. Uh teams that have gone from literal literal trash I, I mean the days of of Tyreek Evans and, and Demarcus Cousins and even before that though those days are, are now over and you know, like I said it, it's cool seeing teams that went from that rise up and take this place that Sacramento now has and I've always said it and I've said it about the Knicks when you see a team with direction you, a, a fan base has reason to be optimistic. I mean, just last year in baseball, the Seattle Mariners broke their playoff drought. Now this year, upcoming in the NFL, if Aaron Rodgers is a Jet, Jets might bl- break their playoff drought. So many of these fan bases are, are being rejuvenated again just on, on one move, just because you're starting to see teams be patient and build slowly through the process. Uh, I think this is a good thing for basketball to see Sacramento rising up and might become a a destination for other players to go. Um, you know, I was talking with uh, somebody at my job yesterday and we were talking about the Kings and he said that it kind of reminds him of the Warriors back in 2013, 2014, how they kind of just took the world by storm and not saying that they're going to become, you know, four-time champions, but saying that they have an opportunity now to take that next step and really put the world on notice. I thought you said that we believe Warriors in 07. Damn. No, he didn't say, yeah, that would have been a better comparison. Yeah, I I, uh, I agree with all your guys' points about the Kings. I commend them. They're, they're doing a great job right now. And now it's just time to see what they do in the playoffs in the first round because it seems like what I'm hearing is teams are trying to lobby. 
or not lobby, but they're trying to get that six seed so they can play the Kings in the first round because they see they see the Kings as fresh meat, vulnerable Mm -hmm. that they can get them. So the last time the last time the Sacramento Kings made the playoffs, the iPhone was not created yet. The Kings made the playoffs in two thousand six. The iPhone came out in January two thousand seven. The late great Kobe Bryant wore the number eight. Dwayne Wade had just come off his finals MVP, one of the greatest finals runs in NBA history. One was underrated without a doubt. Instagram, Twitter didn't exist yet. Did Facebook? Was that the beginning of Facebook, I believe? MySpace was definitely popping, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> creation. I think I'm Facebook. I'm going to limb here, Justin, and say Facebook had just been founded three years before by Mark Zuckerberg. The Zuck. Yeah, the Kings the at the yeah. time, the current Kings, Matthew Della Vidova was 15. Keegan Murray was five. Wow. Now, Keegan Great. Murray also two years at Iowa, so he's an older rookie. Shout out the Kings. But I just want to know where you guys think the Kings can go. I know, you know what? I know where John's going to hyperbole. Justin, where the, can the Kings go? I, I think they're winning a playoff series. I, I, I believe that they have a better chance to win a playoff series than teams like the Clippers, uh, teams like Minnesota. Uh, I think at the moment right now, I think they can even give the Lakers a run for their money if they if they uh, matched up in a first round series. Their offense has proven, you know, in the beginning of the season, you saw the Sacramento Kings above the Western Conference rankings and you thought it was temporary. They made they let you know that this is this is legit. This is for real. Our offense is real. Um, De'Aaron Fox is playing out of his mind. Sabonis is doing his thing. Like you said, I was watching the Knicks-Kings game when we lost, and I was watching Sabonis pass the hell out of that basketball, and I was getting pissed off. Uh, the team is insanely talented. I, I really believe that they have an opportunity to beat. I, I honestly think they could win two rounds here. They could find themselves in the Western Conference Finals. Jay Ray. Woo! See, but this is my thing with the Kings, right? Um and I've you know heard about the, their their offenses is insane. I, I I heard a stat that apparently this is the highest offensive scoring um, uh, season in uh, since Wilt Chamberlain. Uh, I think in 1960. I think if I'm not mistaken. Let, let me put it in more simple terms. This is the highest offensive rating never posted. Okay, and the Kings are the number one offense in the league. But as John probably knows. The Kings have a bottom five defense in the league. So, and I uh, I heard JJ Reddick give this uh, stat out. I believe the only team to ever make a finals with that type of disparity, 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 is the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2018. I don't think that they're making it to the finals. Can they get to the Western Conference finals? That's where I'm. Maybe. But I, problem. I honestly, it looks like they're going to be matched up with the. Uh, but then again, the the West is much harder. I can predict the East pretty easily right now, but the the West is much harder right now. They're matched up with the Warriors. I think that's going seven games. Uh, and if it goes seven games, and and I know they've been trash on the road, Golden State, but in the seventh game, I mean, you cannot count out a team with that type of experience going up against a real inexperienced team with a a defense that is just piss poor. And well, that's going to be a crapshoot, man. I, I I would love to see that game seven. There's a saying, BC, you can never underestimate the heart of a champion. Boy, if that champion's losing their lifeline in Andrew Wiggins. Andrew that is true. Wiggins I mean, the Warriors aren't going – the Warriors are not repeating without Andrew Wiggins. That's a fact. They're not making it out the second round. They're not making it maybe out the first round without Andrew Wiggins. Yep. How they beat Dallas last year, it was Wiggins guarding Luke at full court. Gain offensive rebounds, making three-pointers, switching one through four. Even he's very five, important. He can, on he's some very matchups. important. And then also at the end of Shaq Clacks, hitting some big-time jumpers. So yeah. I think Andrew Wiggins is really the key to them going on any run. They got Gary Payton back. He'll make some plays. He also come off core muscle surgery. I just think Andrew Wiggins, if he does come back, is what makes the Warriors scary. If he is in game shape, I, that can change the entire Western. It game. can, yeah. I, I 100% agree with that, Just John. Yeah. He's very important to this the Warriors uh, run in the playoffs this year. I'm trying to find other Kane statistics. I love that um, I got John hyped up with that. Just, uh, I think Western Conference Finals is uh, that'll break the NBA. 
because the Western Conference. Uh, I mean, they'd match up with the. Wouldn't they match up with Denver in the in the second round? Uh, most likely. Most, Denver, most likely, so. yeah. But that's my thing. Uh, you know, I I don't think in in my lifetime I've seen a a Western Conference this this tight. So. It's, everybody can compete. Everybody is vulnerable. So it, it's so tough for me to even – I'm backtracking on Denver, like the way I view them. The only team that really strikes fear into my heart Phoenix. be Phoenix. That would be the only team. And, they have and Phoenix actually <sighs> – Phoenix will play Denver in the first round. Or Sorry, Phoenix will play Denver in the second round. Nice. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, Sacramento. The Kings would, would play the Grizzlies. Yeah, if the Grizzlies got through. Oh, that's, um, that's electric. Me, no, the Kings, if the Kings could beat the Grizzlies and they could win the first round, they'd be going to the conference finals. I, think I just, I don't want to see Phoenix dismantle my Nuggets in the second round. Oh, that's why you're sad. 